Welcome to the Football Show. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Neil Lennon here with me. And here's what's coming up in today's show. Philippe Clement heaped praise on Todd Cantwell after the midfielder put the midweek fallout behind him to help earn Rangers 2-0 win over St Mirren. So, uh, no, we, we talked about, about the game on Thursday and he agreed that he was not doing what he should do. Brendan Rodgers blasted Celtic for their first half display against Johnston, claiming his half-time team talk was his angriest ever as a manager. Barry Robson claimed Aberdeen's performance was top-notch despite the Don suffering a 2-0 defeat at the hands of Hibs. If we're going to come to Hibs away and have 24 shots and dominate the whole game, I think we're doing something right. So Scotland will star in the opening match at Euro 2024 after being drawn against host Germany in a mouth-watering group draw. Yeah, lots to get our teeth into. Let's start with Scotland. Are you happy with it, Ruffy? The opening fixture against the host Germany and then Hungary and Switzerland as well, as you can see. Um, it looks not bad, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, we've been here before. You know, I think we do particularly well against the, the bigger sides, but uh, Hungary undefeated through their group. I think the games will all be tight. I think this this year more than, than others. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but you can be third best in your group yeah. only two so groups two, two, no, no. so you're yeah. looking at you know the Germany one I, I wouldn't expect us to win that but I expect us to be close to them you know but the other two I would expect to pick up points and that enough points to get qualified well, uh, you know what it's like sometimes if you work for uh, numerous uh, broadcasting newspapers and radio as well uh, and you write for the club magazine, sometimes you can change your opinion, Neil. I remember uh, working alongside uh, Derek Johnson and in the Rangers news he predicted Rangers win on the radio, he predicted maybe a draw uh, and then a defeat when he was on the telly. Um, <laughs> so he, he kind of had covered all bases. So let's go to Lee now who predicted, <laughs> who, who predicted Scotland to beat Germany on the BBC anyway, on know, the radio. That's not a bad shot. I know. Come on. Positivity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll no be easy. First game. What an occasion that would be though to open up uh, a tournament to play the first game. It'd be great feeling for the boys brilliant for the supporters don't get easy games uh, in Euros and World Cups I wouldn't imagine so yeah, great brilliant for the country yeah absolutely uh, I've always had you down as a team player uh, so the minute the draw was made he just texted me the venues where they were <laughs> are we going get and the by, budget out uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way I've got the kilt I, I hope I hope, I hope Lenny's working for RTE <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a good draw I think yeah. um I don't think Germany are the force that they were maybe five, ten years ago. And um, the opening game, like Ruffy, I remember being in France '98 for the Brazil game. And Scotland ran Brazil pretty close, like, you know, it was an own goal that sort of separated the teams. So I wouldn't be, I don't think Steve will be daunted by the group at all. Switzerland will be one to watch out for. I think they're, you know, they're smart, you know, technically very good. But I think Scotland could beat Hungary, so the, the group's open. Yeah, um, I mean, the one thing you always associate with Germany over the last, what, 20, 30 years, beyond that as well, but I always associate them with having, you know, a lethal goal scorer. You could look at a Miroslav Klose, you could look at a Jürgen Klinsmann for a certain generation, you could look at a Gerd Müller, but they, they did have a striker that could score a Thomas Müller, you know, over the last 10 years. They don't have that at the moment that might I'm not saying at the end of the day I mean they've got Nicholas Fulkrug of Dortmund but they don't have somebody you think oh prolific he, he could be really dangerous No but Germany are notorious for doing nothing and then turning up at a tournament and all of a sudden they get out of the group and then they cause a bit of damage here and there but they don't seem to be able as you say from days gone by to get to finals but they'll certainly be difficult I think the boys will tell you if you ever come up against a, a German club side they're not easy to beat a big, physical, strong, mm. you know, very well organised. So there will be that, you know, but I think the guys are right. You know, Scotland have got a good record against the big sides, so why not go into that game? Yeah, um, well, there's an air of optimism. And as a former Scotland internationalist <coughs> alongside Ruffy, are you fairly confident or, you know, thinking the way we are going at the moment, it'll be interesting to see who his final 23 is, but he's... He's got Germany, the Hungarians are a really improved squad. They've obviously come out of a, a, a tough group as well. Um, and then Switzerland, some of their old campaigners, Granit Xhaka, Jordan Shakiri, um, they'll undoubtedly be playing in their last tournament. Yeah, I think, I think the Hungary games they want to, to be looking at taking maximum points. Switzerland, I agree with Lenny, that will be a difficult game. They're, they're good. And the obvious one, 
uh, is Germany, but we're, we're actually all right against the bigger ones. Look at our results, uh, our result against Spain, um, having beaten them. So it's possible, and uh, what a chance to be the first team to go and progress from the group stages. Yeah. A major tournament. I, I think it's a great, great chance. If he does that, he, he, he accords legendary status, doesn't he? I already think he is. You know, he's been two tournaments now for the first time in a long time. I just was blown away by Scotland's performances in the group. You know, like winning sort of the first five games was tops. I think he's got a good squad of players. I think he'll know Pete probably in his mind already is 16, 17. You know, that he'll, he'll bed down for. You know, hopefully there's no injuries or suspensions or anything like that. I think you'll have a fair idea what his starting eleven will be for the Germany game already. I like the way they played France, England, Spain, because you're going to come up against that <clears throat> top tier quality. So again, a great experience for the player. Albeit they didn't win the games, but <clears throat> that's a, it gives them a setter where they got to get to. Yeah. Okay. We uh, keep our fingers crossed. Obviously, we've got to try and book rooms, Ruffy. Um, the one downside of it all is. Um, Lee suggested this morning we all go in a camper van. Didn't he that's, a, that's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, yeah. I'll drive. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch I'll, it. I'll be the designated driver. Yeah, uh, honestly, that would be that would be absolutely oh. carnage. We'd definitely get a bus, <laughs> we'd, we'd get a bus tire, and then we'd yeah. one of us would be lost somewhere. It's, Need uh, a satellite dish and all, yeah, people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'd be frightened, wouldn't you? If there was a, a time scale involved. <laughs> you're on the bus by ten. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't see that happening. Anyway, uh, back to domestic issues. Um, now, last week I got accused, Rafi, of being really, really negative. Um, so let's put a positive spin on St. Johnston 1, Celtic 3, um, because the first half, um, I reckon we get football stopped. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you. I can't that. <laughs> that was really positive. It was the worst, it was the worst <laughs> five minutes I've ever I mean, Celtic just never get going. I think you can guess that Johnston would be better. A compliment, you know, they got everybody behind the ball and it seems to be the case now that it's very, very difficult to break some teams down unless you've got a wee bit of individual, you know, ability that, that can turn them around and, and Celtic did in the second half. There was a 20 minute period where the big players started playing and the movement was magnificent, but the first half was shocking. I mean, the first goal was, you could blame anybody in that defence, you know, because they, they were all there in the vicinity, so... You know, but at the end of the day, they come up with two cracking goals, you know, to win any game. Brendan Rodgers, definitely not happy. Um, I think Neil's been here on many an occasion at half-time. It's where you earn your corn. This is what he had to say at the end of that first 45 minutes. We got bullied for the goal. We were soft and everything with and without the ball. Half-time was the angriest I've ever been as a manager. It was nothing tactical. This was about desire and what it takes to play for this club. Thankfully, in the second half, the players were brilliant. Um, sometimes it, it, it takes that. Oh, no question. I think they were feeling maybe a bit sorry for themselves after Lazio. When you know it's always a bit of a hangover. Jiggle telly when you've been playing Champions League games and you've not had a decent <coughs> result. But it's interesting the comments that Brendan made. I think he made it seen that as a tipping point almost. You know, if you come away with a draw or a defeat here, there's only one way we are going at the minute. You know, a draw with Motherwell losing to Lazio, another insipid performance, and he's obviously. Earned his money on, on Sunday, rolled his sleeves up and gone, dug a few of them out, made some positive changes. And I have to agree with you, the second half, you know, the last 20, 25 minutes, I thought they really were good. I thought some of the goals and the movement and the quality of play was great, but obviously he felt that it, it's not his way, but obviously he was irked that much that, you know, it's, it's coming from somewhere. As I mentioned to you at the start of uh, the whole campaign, he wanted two or three good players in to supplement the squad, never mind the ones for the future. Um, and then, lo and behold, suddenly that story has come out and oh, really? he's admitted that he, wants, he, want, he wanted four. Right, OK. <clears throat> it's not a good look, you know, so I think the, the, they've got to look at January now. And it, I'm telling you, it's difficult to do business in January, Pete. Because yeah. when people know you want players, they're going to ask for more money, agents are going to hold out for more wages, and clubs sometimes don't want to let players go. Yeah. You know, in the January window, so there's going to have to be a bit of quality work done. It's obvious to everyone that Brendan wants more quality players in the building. And to be fair, the strength and depth showed up on yesterday when with Johnson coming in and you know making a bright impact. And um, 
Yeah, I think he was delighted with that, but you don't know what you're going to get with Mikey from week to week. Yeah, just one little footnote before I go back to the boys. Um, how difficult is it to, because I reckon he wants to clear out a few bits of deadwood, how difficult is it to equally get them out? Yeah, it's really, window? really difficult, you know. I think the squad needs trimming. I think there's a lot of players in there that aren't in his plans or, and that's difficult for them as well. And some honest ones will come and go, Gaffer, I agree with you, I need to go and play, but others will sit tight and, you know, want the best package they can get before they go. Yeah, well, well, I think one guy that actually put himself to the forefront who was a player that I thought had potential until he picked up an injury was Mikey Johnson. He was, he was dangerous in the second half, Lee. He's got ability, hasn't he? Lenny will know no better than, than any of us. He's, he's can eliminate people. But for me, looking outside, I see him as a confidence player, like... I think it'd be easy if he gives the ball away at Celtic Park, the fans go on him, I think he goes in his shell um, a little bit too much. <coughs> confidence, just confidence, play, but ability, certainly there. He gets very frustrated very quickly if things yeah. aren't going for him, and that overrides what he should be doing. He lets the men mental side of the game get the better of him, you know, and it's like sometimes you throw the hands around. He is very gifted, he's always been gifted, he's had a horrendous run of injuries, but he's... I think he went out on home last year to Portugal. He's been picked for Ireland. I think that'd give him a real boost. You know, he's um, now in and around the squad. And he wasn't featuring at all, Peter. But yeah. obviously, he's not a young kid anymore, Mike. He must be 24, 25 now. So, you know, he'll be seeing this as maybe his last chance to lunatic itself. And he's got to play. And not just play. Play consistently well. Yeah, and if you're looking to inspire Ruffy, the best midfielder in the country popped up. The captain, I mean, it was a sweet strike. Yeah. Oh, he hits it just perfect. You know, you, you do these, you see guys doing that in training, you know, regularly, but it just dropped to him. And it, it, apart from the goal, you could see what it meant to him. Kill him. As a captain, mm, yeah. you know, when he scored the goal, he knew uh, the level that he, he's got to be at, you know, as a captain. And you could see his response behind the goals to the fans and that. And the fans really bought into that, you know, this is what this, this is what's playing for Celtic's all about. And he's our captain and look what he's doing. He's pulling us out of this wee bit of bad spell and credit to him. He's, an, he's just a credit to the game. Yeah, mm. um, two absolute raker goals. Uh, just one little thing that I think you, you, you probably highlight as well. There was just a 60 second passage of play where Joe Hart made a good save. Because that could yeah. have been 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, he certainly did. It wasn't a powerful header, you know. He had enough time to get to it. But, uh, you know, these are crucial saves. And obviously we know what happened after that. He made the save. They went on to win the game. So it's not a great save, but it's an important one. I yeah. thought he should have scored, Ruffy. From, from where I'm stood. Ah, he's, he's got to score it. And Joe does well, like, you know. But, I mean, he's got sort of half a goal to power it in. And he doesn't get enough purchase. So it was a great chance, Pete. Yeah, it was a brilliant chance. You know, and then obviously Celtic go up the other end when St. Johnson have thrown bodies on it. And... Great finish from Forrest for the third. It was really exciting 20 minutes or so in the game, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as St. Johnson on the flip side of this, and they've still got that remit, just stay in the division. Um, 11th, just a point ahead of bottom of the table, Livingston. But uh, there are positives that uh, Craig Levine was able to take out of the game. He's, he's a winger, basically, but he, I mean, he's a powerful guy and he, his technique's pretty good. And I thought that he, he troubled their centre-backs today. Um, and he got a goal, which again for the strikers is a, you know, it's a fairly positive situation. So yeah, I was pleased with him. I was pleased with a lot of things, you know, but when you look at the scoreline, they've lost 3 1, it feels about uh, maybe a glass of wine tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's probably. <coughs> the best goat couch you could have for people who can relate to that sort of thing. <laughs> all, all, all having a glass of wine after a miserable night. <laughs> it didn't let him affect them. Um, but uh, nevertheless, he's still got to somehow Lee engineer uh, St Johnston away from that. He's got St Mirren on Wednesday. These are The St Mirren games maybe are the ones... Yeah, the ones that he need to win, yeah. obviously. But I, I think there's been a, a positive turnaround since he went in. I think he's done really well. Um, obviously frustrated Celtic first half uh, just yesterday there. And then a little bit unlucky with the, with the missed chance. Maybe he could have scraped a point, but I think Celtic were too dominant. There's, there's a definite 
change in mentality in the dressing room since he's went in and it's apparent and that, that you can see that. I think they'll be alright. Yeah. Really do. Um, it was a big call for Rangers manager Philip Clement um, whether he was going to start with uh, Todd Cantwell. Uh, I think the Rangers boss was happy with uh, starting with him and obviously got the reaction he got from him. Uh, you guys are to, to decide about that. I selected him already so for me his selection was before already sure. So uh, no, we we talked about about the game on Thursday, and he agreed that he was not doing what he should do. He was frustrated about himself also and his performance on Thursday. So this is the reaction that I want to see. Yeah, this is what happens, as you well know, Lee. Once somebody gets hauled off after 33 minutes, everybody goes into overdrive and thinking, "Whoa, whoa there's a story here." Um, so we we're wondering whether he was going to he was going to start. He did start, and Rangers defeated St. Mirren by two goals to nil. Yeah, spoke about it when he did get the substitute. He's been given a role and responsibility in the pitch. He wasn't doing anything that he was asked to do, so he had to come off. I think he'd, he'd done all right yesterday. Uh, Rangers huffed and puffed. They were. First half, maybe a bit slow, a little bit like Celtic in possession and passing of the ball, but the, they were dominant in the end and they probably deserved it. And, and Cantwell done all right. He was, he was good. I still think there's more to come, but it, it was after a difficult couple of days probably for him. I think the performance was good yesterday. Yeah, um, Raskin is a doubt for the cup final. Uh, they're going to assess him. Um, uh, they have actually brought in a new director of football, Niels Coppin. Um, he'll be the man to get uh, pinpoint some of the players, Ruffy, that Rangers undoubtedly need. Yeah, and I'm sure the supporters will be hoping he identifies the right players. You know, it'll be interesting to see where he's going to bring them from. Obviously, he's got a track record over in Europe. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which country they sort of a tap into obviously it's usually the country you come from or the country that you've been a man <laughs> before you've identified players that you've come up against so I, th I always think January I know Neil saying it's a really difficult time for a manager but from a supporter it's it's a great time because you're the anticipation of who you're going to bring in how many you're going to bring in you know and it, it keeps the supporters on their, their toes what's the most you've ever brought in a January oh, I can't remember um, <clears throat> two or three anyway yeah more younger ones, like, you know, sort of uh, development players to sort of just tip the, the squad a little bit. But, you know, mostly you want to get your work done in the in the summer. I am, I'm interested, like, you know, in what they're thinking now. You know, they've brought in a lot of players. Some of them have performed, though, Pete Seema. You know, you've got another two yesterday. His goal record is, is pretty good. I don't know about you, Lee. Where do you think Cantwell's best position is? Is he a 10? I think it would be a 10. Yeah. I don't see him at wide. I think he'd get away with him out on the left, playing narrow. Mm -hmm. No for me in the right. I no. just think he's no good. Look at the pace, has he? Yeah, not. exactly. And he'd want to come to the ball all the time yeah. as well. Which you've seen for the second goal, you know, he spun the boy and played a beautiful ball into Seema. And um, maybe they need to utilise him a little bit better, and certainly in the forward areas. Is he a 10? Is he, has he got the vision? Has he got the I ability so. to, to break the lines? The, the ability. Um, it just needs a run of games probably in that position. Yeah. Putting him in there, fans are wanting McCausland to start, that frees up the wide right for a bit of pace um, and to get crosses in the box. So it probably makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, um, St Mirren, um, they were always going to go through a difficult phase um, and a run of games where it wasn't going to go according to plan, especially after such a brilliant start. Uh, Stephen Robinson said he, he wasn't too worried with what Rangers were offering. You know, I, I didn't think Rangers troubled us in the first half. I thought we were very much in control without the ball. Um, when we landed on the ball in the bottom third and middle third, we were composed and we just lacked maybe, you know, a little bit of support in terms of getting people closer to Jonah. Um, and also our press, you know, I thought we could have been more aggressive and stepped forward with our press more. But um, as I say, that's difficult. I'll, I'll never criticise the players for their effort and their organisation. They're very, very good at times. And the second goal kills us because it's, it's poor defensively. It's one ball that splits the defence when... We're trying to step up and we don't play offside. Yeah, um, St Mirren, <coughs> Ruffy, I think when you, you look at Stephen Robinson, um, I mentioned the good start, but they're at that point now where suddenly you're looking, you're saying, are our, our hearts, our hips, are Aberdeen going to really start to, mm -hmm. you know, peg them and, and, and start pushing them further down the table? Yeah, I, th I think we've spoke about it before. It's all about the fixture list. You know, there'll be fixture lists when you're 
you're staying away for Rangers and Celtic and the, the, the forum teams and you're getting teams that are maybe on the slide and you're picking mm. up points. So it depends what kind of fixture list he's got. But I think you have to give some man all credit for the start they've got. They've given themselves a bit of breathing space. You know, there are enough points away for any danger. So it's about expectations, I would think, if you were to give St Myrna a top six place, they would take it right now. You know, that would be the objective. But uh, I think it's encouraging now that certain teams are going to Ibrox and going to Parkhead and at least no part in the bus. Mm. At least they're the, at some stage in the game, they're attempting to get something out of the game. Yeah, um, is it? I mean, this is just a, this is just an overview on the weekend as well, and obviously the the, the difficulty of watching our two biggest clubs in, in European football is the. Am I the only one who thinks there's just a lull in the football standard at the moment? Is it? No, listen, I've been saying this for a while. Um, I looked at the you know when you're in the United States looking. <coughs> it was abroad last year. You're looking at the results and. For a long time, Celtic and Rangers just win in every game. You know, this year at least we're seeing gloves laid on them. You know, a couple of draws here, a couple of lost a couple of games already. But in terms of the standard below the top two, I think it's poor people. Now, whether that may be from, you know, post COVID and clubs not maybe having the the money or trying to attract the the quality of player that you're looking for, there's only one or two players out there that you would really look at and go like Miofsky, for example. You know, I think he's been brilliant for Aberdeen. But there's not many like that, and just the games themselves. You know, you're just sitting there watching, going, "What are you? What? What's this team actually trying to do?" Yeah, I mean, if the, uh, uh, of all the teams out there, and and remember, Hearts went through that transitional phase. I mean, four weeks ago they wanted Naismith bumped. Yeah, um, Hibbs um, had to get a new manager in. Uh, the only real positive shining light for me has been Stephen Robinson's St Mirren. Because the rest of them have just been underperforming. It's just underperforming and not, as as Neil mentioned, being able to lay a glove on anyone. Yeah, there's definitely been a a dip in standard over maybe the last 12 months, maybe even longer. And I even think the old firm, both the old firm, none of them hit the ground really running yet. Get a a bit of momentum going, um, whether that be with with Europe and just just struggling with some injuries, suspensions, whatever it will be. Stephen Robertson started the season so well. It's not really. He's, he's quite. They play quite direct in the in your face, playing second balls, and I think they've come away from that a little bit. Um, and that maybe that's why the results have not been there. Uh, maybe a wee bit of desire away for the players. I don't know. Um, but there's no real standout team this year. At the end of the day, there's yeah. obviously teams that are going to be ups and downs, but. There's nobody really you'd say, bloody hell, apart from maybe Hearts in the last four games and Hibs the last three games. Other than that, it's out with the old firm. I mean, yeah. not really much. Yeah, you're there. thinking, like, are they, are they good enough to watch so Do you know what I mean, Jake? Yeah. Like, they're getting results, but they seem to be scratching them Aye. out at the minute. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not great to watch. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're trying. I mean, <clears throat> by the way, and sometimes I think, you know, clubs, managers, owners, call it what you will anywhere, sometimes I think they're very, very guilty of selective hearing. Um, but just basically because they're fed, you, nobody's turning around and putting a paper in your, when you're a Celtic manager, nobody's turning around and going, by the way, these two guys said nice things about you. It's, by the way, here's a boy who slaughtered you, mm-hmm. here's another negative, here's, we try and be positive, but in the last, in the last six months, you know, Rangers have got a new manager, and you're saying, okay, right, he's got a squad there that clearly is going to have to empty a few, are you seeing a difference in the football? Brendan Rodgers comes in, are you seeing a difference in the football from from Ange Postecoglou, is it, a, is it new? Is it is a big kick? I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything igniting yet. No, I agree with you. Um, and I, I'm going to talk about Hibs and Hearts and Aberdeen, for example. And you went through this last year. It's difficult when you're in the Europa Conference as well. The players aren't used to the European Sunday. We've talked about this. Yeah. And now that you see that Hibs and Hearts are out of it, all of a sudden they're getting a bit of consistency with results. Maybe not so much performances. In terms of the style of play... <clears throat> It was always going to be difficult to better what Ange had done with the team over the last couple of years. And Brendan has his own style, but it's not like a million miles away from what Ange wants to do anyway. Maybe it's a little bit more possession-based, but, you know, it's, I had the same problem when I followed Brendan. You're, you're following on from a guy who's ultimately very, very successful. It's difficult to improve on that, but you try and do that, and maybe once he gets what he perceives as his players in, you might see a change in that. Hearts. 
fourth consecutive league win, which is good for Stephen, um, albeit that, that the cross from Lauren Shanklin looks as if it's been going down as well. Dennis' his own goal, but who cares? They win. They win. That Stephen will no, will no bother whatsoever. It's a tough place to go, especially Kilmarnock's home form uh, this season. I think Nasey just hit a little bit of run of form, especially been under so much pressure. Um, the only negative really is Liam Boyce and off um, win injury. Massive game now. They go into it against Rangers at home, where at Tynecastle they've actually been good. they've got a good uh, record there, and Rangers always find it difficult going there. So that's going to be a really really close game, I think. Yeah. Um... Uh, I was I was actually going to be a little. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, was, I was thinking about the noise up there. Well, do, you, do you think Hearts just really only lift themselves from the Rangers? <laughs> I thought, no, I'm not going no, for it. To not. hell with it. <laughs> to hell with it. Uh, Stevie Naismith. I like that. Yeah, well, that, that's what the standards. And it, you know, I'll get Neil's thoughts on this because Stevie Naismith said, you know, okay, it's four consecutive games. That should be the norm for Hearts. If I'm honest, for a club like Hearts and a few other clubs, they'll say the same. It should be normal that you can go on a run like that. It shouldn't take five years. Um, but it's, it's three points. It keeps us ticking over. The, the run of games is good. But the way we're dealing with each game has been brilliant. The, the, the run of four, every game's been different. What we've needed to get the win. Um, so really good. And we're, at the end there, you've got Cammy Devlin, who's got an injury, struggling to move. No thinking twice about putting his body in the line when he needs to. Um, so credit to the whole squad, it's a it's a group that's really together. Hard to believe, five years the last time they, they won four on the bounce. I tell you, I, I, I like what he's saying, it should be normal and he's right. But now you've got to back that up by, you know, continuing to do it. Yeah. Obviously, like, he's got a massive test at um, at Tynecastle against Rangers. But when I watched them against Celtic earlier on in the season, I thought they were really poor, Peter. Really passive. Not what you'd expect at Tynecastle. I mean, Celtic toyed with them and ends up winning the game four. Now, you can't approach the game like that. Yeah. If, if he thinks he's going to outplay Rangers, you know he's got another thing coming. But they're in a good place. Keep them clean sheets. And that's a, that's, that breeds confidence and psychologically. He's in a better place now when he's coming out with positive comments like that. I like that. Here's a question which is for everybody to deliberate. Uh, you know, Rangers are the chasing club on this one uh, in the title and everybody's looking and saying, OK, even before a transfer window, that 30th of December fixture is waiting. It's looming in the background, Ruffy. With Rangers going to Tynecastle and, and you're always chasing, is any slip-up fatal before they even hit Celtic Park? I think we've discussed it for quite a while now. I think it would be, you know, if, if, if Rangers were to lose and Celtic were to win, the gap obviously gets bigger. You know, I know Rangers have got a game in hand, but certainly, you know, you want to win, Rangers want to win as many games, or nearly all the games before the Celtic game. And uh, Hearts, Tynecastle, Easter Road, Petaudry are the places when Rangers and Celtic go to where you're looking for maybe points to be dropped. So... It's a massive game for Rangers coming up. Yeah, Hearts, Dundee, Matisse, Aberdeen, uh, St Johnston, Motherwell, Ross County, and then Celtic. What a fixture list that is. They need to win every game. It's, it's simple. The, the bet is maybe not as much pressure on it as, as what there normally would be, but they need to win it, and, and there's a cup final in there as well. That They need to win. There's, there's no... Uh, no room for error? No, no, no. not at all. You need totally to, agree. And that is, League over if there's any slip-ups? Well, it depends on what Celtic do, yeah. do, but Rangers have just got to concentrate on themselves and just go and pick up maximum points to go into that old firm game with the best chance, uh, uh, let's say, it causing an upset. If they get an early goal in the old firm game, then who knows? Who knows what could happen? It's a really pivotal time of the year, this. You know, <coughs> the guys were talking about it last week. Rangers were playing Aberdeen. You know, between now and the end of the year, they've got 11 games. That's a massive ask, you know, in the next sort of month. So he's got to try and, you know, use the squad as best he can. But he needs, it doesn't matter, for me at the minute, it doesn't matter about performances, Pete. It's all about the wins. You know, like Nezzy at the minute, it's going, you know, scratching it, one nils here at Motherwell and Killy away, it's great. That's what Philippe will have to do. And if they can win well, so be it. But if they can just win and keep the pressure on Celtic until... And you never know, Celtic might drop points. You know, they're not like looking like they're, they're going to run away with anything at the minute. So it's going to be a really interesting 
period coming up, but you're right, as Lee touched on, I don't think there's a margin for error for Rangers, and it become really tiring when you're chasing it all the time as well, you know? Yeah. Um, Kelly, it was a close encounter, and they dropped out of the top six. Um, I think the manager was certainly positive on the fact that they, they should have had enough time to get back into that game and maybe get a point against Hearts. We've had enough chances. It's no one. We don't lose the game because of Will Dennis today. You know, and we need to make that clear. And I said that uh, the team with enough opportunity. Sometimes, like the last time here, when Hart scored in the 93rd minute in the cup, you get no no time to punch back and have a go back. But we had plenty of time today in the first half, and we lose a goal, and we had good opportunities to to bail our teammates out and, and to to um, to make the scoreline different, but we that's where we fall, we fell short today, and unfortunately, we've lost a game against a good team. Yeah, always frustrating, and when it comes into an area where there's lots of games, um, as Neil uh, mentioned, I think uh, Alex McLeish used to say it just win it ugly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that's the key to it all, and boy, Hibbs managed to win ugly <laughs> at the weekend, Robbie, because it was a, it was, <laughs> it was a smash and grab, yeah. wasn't it? Because yeah. Aberdeen pounded them. Of course, it was difficult for you because you had yeah. to make sure all your teeth were clean after the start, <laughs> the starter, well, the meat uh, 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 and the sweets. Yes, yes, was uh, on the uh, red uh, wine as well, Pete. Yeah, uh, could sort of congeal a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, just just waving and then realising it was the Aberdeen end. <laughs> You're perfectly correct. The, the, the prawn cocktail was making yeah, exactly. And the cheesecake was just to die for. Yeah. And then somebody said we had to go and watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first half, I thought, Hibs uh, and Aberdeen gave as good as they, they got. You know, Hibs deserved to go in, you know, one nothing up, you know. But uh, the last 20, 25 minutes were... Hibbs got that second goal right at the right time because Aberdeen were pressing, pressing, pressing. When Hibbs scored the second goal, it sort of knocked them back maybe five, ten minutes. But the last ten minutes, if it hadn't been for David Marshall, I think Aberdeen, I don't think they'd have won the game. They were taking something out of the game. They, they deserved to get the draw, but these things, you, you take it when it's there. Yeah, Nick Montgomery doesn't care. He's won it. I thought today wasn't our best performance. In patches, I thought we were very good. Um, but yeah, at times we, we, we lost concentration, we know they're a direct team and, and yeah, that's something that, that, that I just spoke about. Sometimes you have to win a little bit ugly and I thought we did that today. Again, clean sheet. Yeah, well happy with that. Uh, and the flip side of that is no matter how many chances you create, it always reminds me of Kendra Gleish, she said, um, it doesn't matter how, you know, if you want to look back on the close misses that hit the bar and everything, if you just look at the scoreline at the end, <laughs> it just tells you the scoreline. It doesn't tell you how close the other team came. <laughs> exactly. That sums it up, doesn't it? Of course it does. And I think it's just all about the points. And he said it himself, wasn't he? It wasn't pretty, but... We all know it doesn't need to be pretty uh, every week and you're not going to get pretty every week even if you want it. So it's uh, important three points and um, it keeps them up, run about and still looking for that third place where that's where Hibs should be looking but it's becoming more realistic now, especially for this start they had of the season. Yeah, I, I have Hibs and Hearts going to be battling it out for third um, and, and I'm, I'm putting my money on Hibs at the moment. Obviously, we'll, we can change as we go along, Rafi. I'm in, oh, really? I'm invoking uh, the... He I'm can, we can. I'm, invo <laughs> I'm invoking the... Hey, calm down, you two. <laughs> calm down. I can go back over some of the things you two have said in the last few months. Um, but nevertheless, um, Barry Robson... I mean, it's, it's three wins from 13 games. Um, but he wasn't negative about what his team produced yesterday. That's his best. That's probably the best we've played since I've probably been in the job. Been, been in the job. I think um, we were. Um, I don't know. People say, "Yeah, you lost the game and all that," but I get that. But if we're going to come, uh, Hibs have been have twenty four shots and dominate the whole game. I think we're doing something right. So I've got to give the players credit for that. But I've also got to remember that we need to win games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, twenty four shots. Didn't get it in the end. Hibbs get three points, six goals, and a red card at Fair Park between Motherwell and Dundee, and it was a great game, Lee. Oh, I know. Jeez, Dundee, they feel feel as if they've lost that 97 minutes uh, with the equaliser. It's exactly what Motherwell needed. If Motherwell looked as if they were going to turn the corner, they get a point at Celtic Park, and then they're thinking the momentum's coming, the fans, everybody's thinking, right, that's us, we're going to get back to. Um, where we were and how we started the, the season and just poor, poor defensively. I thought, I think they've given away 
really, really easy goals. Centre halves are, are defence, let's say. Um, I know really that I think that's somewhere he needs to strengthen. Yeah, just at one little point that Ange Postacoglu made after the Spurs Man City game, which I thought was relevant and very relevant to Harry Payton, who I thought was maybe just unlucky getting sent off mm -hmm. after a VAR review. But, it, you know, what's happening now, Ange Postacoglu says, is they're just re refereeing a game in VAR. Yeah. You know, if you get to the point where you have to slow it down frame by frame by frame, angle by angle by angle, and then start talking into the referee's ear constantly. Constantly, that's it's not right. That's not right. No, you, you want to sort of, you want. It's like we always talk about Peter. Two words: common sense. That's what players want. That's what managers want. They don't want any, you know, confusion or bending of the rules. Just get the decision simple, concise, so we can all get on with the game. Yeah, absolutely. And leave it down. To, ultimately, it's still the referee that makes that decision. But stop trying to cajole him into making a decision that he might not want to make himself. Yeah, Stuart Kettlewell is not happy. These types of tackles must come with the same punishment, but for some reason, for whatever reason, it certainly doesn't. You know, you speak to people at Celtic Park last week, members of staff and people that know that Greg Taylor's got away with one last week, that it's a yellow card, not a red, and then we come here and forgive me for thinking that we're going to get punished for it, and rightfully so, I accept that, I accept that, but it does change the dynamics of games, it does change the scenario of games, um, and just now I feel like we, we get punished for absolutely everything, I've seen something during the week, their card counts higher than everybody else's. Yeah, um, it will feel that way, but they managed to get a point, um, much to the annoyance of the Dundee manager, Tony Doherty. I thought we were by miles the better team in terms of shots and possession and you know what, we've just got to manage that last 90 seconds and if I, I'd say to the boys, if I go and set that up uh, when we come back in training and we do it 99, 100 times, we defend it 100 times. So, bitterly disappointed but you know, I need to be a wee bit more, uh, look at it a wee bit more in depth and I think the level of performance I'm getting for the players is outstanding. Okay, here's how the table looks, Ruffy. Um, it's getting it's getting tougher to call because you could throw a blanket over that bottom six. Yeah, and I, th I think as the boys said, Sir Johnson are beginning to dig in a wee bit. You know, I do expect Aberdeen to dig themselves out of that. So Livingston's for me looking pole position. Uh, who gets drawn into that fight? Uh, this midweek games you know, are very, very crucial because there could be a gap opening up right in that middle bit. So... All to play for, you know, I, I do think, as I said earlier, I think St Martin will finish top six. But for me, Dundee are, are doing remarkably well. Mm. And what Lovingston don't need right now is civil war, Ruffy, where yeah, there's, that, a, yeah. there's a petition to try and block the takeover. Yeah, well, I've obviously been there uh, at Partick Thistle with that thing going on, you know. It is a difficult time. Uh, David Martindale would, <laughs> would be hoping everybody would be focusing and everything on the park. But when there's things like that going on behind the scenes, Davey wants to move on, he wants the consortium to come in to get money, obviously, to strengthen the team. So the sooner they get it sorted out, the better for the club. Uh, what about the predictor? Would you believe it, Ruffy? I completely forgot to post the Saturday um, predictions um, and lost three games out of it. So as you, I'm amazed I'm actually still in the running there. I'm a half a point behind you. Uh, Alison's making a move. Tam and then Adam and Patrick. It's 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 just Shocking. it's really about it's really about us Ruffy trying to make a move now on Pat Lowe who's at the top of the table. Yeah, I think Pat's a bit too far ahead, <laughs> I think, with the points structure that's in it, but uh, he's doing particularly well. It must be getting some impressive correct scores to get that amount of points. Yeah, I think anybody who's managed to get the points that Pat's managed to, when you consider some of the erratic score lines that have been firing out. How they're predicting that, I yeah. don't know. I can hear Gordon Strachan in the background saying he's had a couple of kestrels and he's just decided to, <laughs> just decided yes, to predict, <laughs> just decided to predict mad, mad score lines, Neil, and we're off and running. Uh, anyway, um, here's the fixtures for midweek. There's a, a card that, uh, of course, uh, some teams will be involved in, Ross County against Motherwell. Uh, Aberdeen against Kilmarnock, Celtic take on Hibs, St Johnson, St Mirren and Hearts against Rangers is undoubtedly uh, the pick of the bunch uh, from those fixtures. Um, so, um, one little thing that reports coming in saying pla plastic pitches next season talks over a grass only Yay. vote. Hey, exactly, it should have been long ago. And Livy had a game called off. How can that be? I know. I yeah. How can that be? I go switch to heat, man. I oh, think it'd be brilliant if for an all-weather pitch. pitch. I was going to say, yeah, uh, all-weather, all-weather <laughs> pitch. 
Yeah, happy yeah to I'm glad to see the bat, yes. Yeah. Listen, it's fine, like, every now and again for training on, Peter, but um, as a spectacle for the Premier League here in Scotland, one of the top leagues, it, it doesn't, it's never set well with me anyway, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, didn't like playing on them and I certainly didn't like coaching on them. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see the back of them. Okay, just before we go, um, the English Premier League, everybody sometimes hypes up a game and you think it's never going to live up to it. Boy, did, boy, did Tottenham Man City live up to it at the Etihad. Oh, um, it was great to watch. And it's good to see, well, not good to see, but did you see the through ball for Haaland? Oh, did the, yeah. It's, it's crazy, so it just shows you the referee's that behind level. the ball, isn't he? I mean, he there's they no out. They can get it wrong, even at that level. I think we're first to jump on uh, our VAR decisions, and obviously rightly so, but it just shows you even at the top, top level, they could make the most basic error of mistake. Yeah, the one thing about referees is they're, they're very much in that goalkeeper camp, Ruffy. You can have a great game for 89 minutes, but if you have a howler of a goal that goes past mm -hmm. you, you know, everybody's on your case. And that referee, I thought, handled the match well. Mm -hmm. Right up until I couldn't understand why he waited and waited. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to hear what he's got to say about why he blew yeah, the whistle. Yeah, I, was listen, I was listening to the, the other referee that does, mm -hmm. uh, you know, analyse him. And he was saying that that particular referee is the best referee in the league for letting things go. Mm -hmm. He has a record. He did let a lot go yesterday, uh, Rofi, to be fair. He lets it play. So it just shows you, you can make, uh, I mean, Haaland jumps up so quick. You know, once, you, you, once you've blown it. It was Jack Grealish on a one-on-one. -on -one. He'd have never got there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably no. doing Jack a favour. Exactly. <laughs> You'd have got it, caught. It was a belter of a game. It was bonkers. Absolutely yeah. bonkers. I, I, and you know the funny thing about it? Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I am, and I know he wants to play this way, but I watch the game and sometimes oh, I'm listen. wincing at the back when they're playing it along that pitch. Man City could have been five up. You know, Holland missed yeah. the sitter. They've hit the bar with Doku. They've hit the yeah. post with Alvarez. There's another couple of times. And this was all... he not change, but one day they're going to get an absolute tanking of somebody and then we'll have to go... Might have to rethink this. They're brilliant going forward, but they don't have the players at the minute, especially against City, to play it from the back. I think it's a great result for them, but they got away with one yesterday. There's no question. Yeah. Just briefly go back to the Hibs game. I don't know if you saw it in the Hibs game. Something needs to tell me the Hibs buy kicks. I don't know if you saw it. When Hibs get a bye kick, David Marshall puts the ball on the six yard line. The centre half goes six yards to the <coughs> side. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he walks in and passes it to David Marshall. And then, they, then they can the start. Yeah. What is that? Can anybody tell me what that's all about? I think it's, yeah. I think it's to be able to go either way. A build up play. Because he'd be really good, Marshy, at sort of. They practice it every day, yeah, Jake, don't yeah, they? Sort yeah. of zinging it to the wing yeah. back or zinging it to the, the right wing back. Uh, by the way, can I just. <laughs> No, it's not for me. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's absolutely nerve-wracking watching Tottenham yesterday. Can I just highlight to everyone, with um, and I, I love his, you know, he's digging his heels in because everybody's coming at him from all angles. Hey, Ange. Ange saying, you know, you, you're still going to play this way, you're still going to play this way. Uh, can I just remind everybody, they're fifth, right? They're only six points off the top. And he's got massive injuries. injuries yeah. And he's still to have a transfer window. This guy's still... Oh, listen, for me, he's a real deal, like, you know what I mean? Um, I just don't know how long you can maintain that. Because when you, you know, I mean, like I say, City should have been four or five up. The game should have been out of sight at half time. And then I thought City got really complacent. And it wasn't actually a brilliant player from Spurs, but they just got themselves back into the game, you know. And then good goal from the So And then McGreely scored, you think, and that's it. But all, they're, they're conceding a lot of goals at the minute, Pete. Yeah. You know, a lot of goals. And then Arsenal, Liverpool, they look really, really strong. But Ange is still there. And the good thing with Ange is no European football, so he can work week to week, even though he has a horrendous injury list at the minute. Yeah. I just wonder if they'll, they'll stick with Ten Hag at Man United. Ruffy, he looks as if he's odds on for me. Well, I think if it was going to happen, it would happen by now. <laughs> Obviously, they treasure the Champions League, uh, the history that they've got there. So... That's going to be a big shout, that one, how that pans out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, don't worry, we're not linking you with that job just yet. Um, it's only a matter of time. Uh, anyway, uh, what a what a, a good programme, good chat. Hopefully, if you like it, you can hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Figures are absolutely fantastic. We're delighted with your support. And if you download the app, you'll get all the breaking stories at your fingertips from Ruffy, uh, Lee, Lenny and myself, Peter Martin. Thank you for listening and watching.